In this tutorial, you'll learn the smart way to place text in Adobe InDesign. Notice I'm using Adobe InDesign CC, which stands for Creative Cloud, and this works on the Mac as well as Windows, including earlier versions of Creative Suite, such as CS6 or CS5. I'll begin by clicking on the Adobe logo to close the splash screen, and I'll choose from the File menu the New command to create a new document. You can also use the keyboard shortcut Command or Control N, and I'll simply use the new document profile for print, and when I click OK, you'll see there's a blank sheet of 8.5 by 11 paper here. Now, to create a text box, you'll need to be on the Type tool. You can't simply click and start typing with this tool as you can in other Adobe programs. If you do that, it blinks at you. It doesn't beep. But if you press a letter such as W, notice that all those imaginary lines just disappeared. That's because there's a keyboard shortcut, as you can see down here at the bottom of the Tools panel. W is the keyboard shortcut for Preview Mode, and if I click it back, Again, if I type that W, you'll see it goes back into normal mode. So in order to typeset on the page in InDesign, you must create a frame. So I'll just move my mouse to the intersection of the margin and column guides here, and I'll just drag out the dimensions of a frame as you see here. Now the text is blinking, and now I could start to type. I'll just type the word hello so you can see there. But if you want two or more frames to thread throughout a document, you'll need to switch back to the selection tool, which is the solid arrow you see here. And then you'll see these handles, and there are several handles to a text frame. And something unique to text frames is this little box that you see here. That's known as an outport. And if I just point and peck, just tap on that, it loads the little place gun. So now I can drag out a little linked text box. So I'll just drag it out as you see here, and you'll see smart guides will find the same height. Now, you don't see the little leash that connects these dots unless you'll, you visit the View menu. You'll need to turn on where it says Extras, Show Text Threads. It's a good idea to turn on the Show Text Threads option when no documents open so that you won't have to do that for each file, and then you'll see this little leash that connects the dots there. So I'm going to switch back to the text tool by double-clicking so you can see my cursor is in the box there. And then if you want to insert some placeholder text, I'm just going to right-click and choose this command. Fill with placeholder text will conjure up just the right amount of the lost language of Latin to fill the text frame. And this can be really useful if you're waiting for some copy to appear. Now, notice if I switch back to the selection tool and select this first box, if I decrease the depth by grabbing this middle handle here, notice that the text flows into the frame. However, that frame, if I select it, you can see it's overset as indicated by this little red plus here. If I just point and peck on that plus, it loads the place gun again, in which case I can thread out another frame. So you can manually thread text by grabbing the little outports and connecting the frames together. Now let's look at how if you had an existing document that you want to place on the page. I'm just going to drag select all these boxes and press the delete key to delete all those boxes. And this time I'm going to go to the file menu and choose the place command. And I'm going to use this threading text RTF file, which stands for Revisable Text Format, also known as Rich Text Format. And if I click the Open button, you'll see the place gun is loaded with the text. Now, I could simply drag out a frame, but there are other keyboard shortcuts, such as Shift. If you press and hold the Shift key, you'll see a snaking arrow appears. That's your clue that it's going to auto-flow all of the text. There's currently only one page to this document, but if I Shift-click, you'll see it just dumps all the text into as many frames as necessary. You can see it flows onto as many pages as necessary to flow that text throughout the document. Now, in the real world, you would first establish the document architecture and page geometry, is what we call that. And to demonstrate that, I'm going to go to the File menu and open a recent file here called Threaded Text. And this InDesign document has set up already on both master pages as well as the document pages there are existing frames here. For example, if I select this, you can see that these frames thread from one page to the next. So all I need to do here is just double click with the selection tool and notice I'm now on the text tool. And when I choose from the file menu, the place command, you'll see that that same RTF file, when I click open, is going to flow through all those pages. Furthermore, it also inherited the existing styles in this document so that the styles are automatically mapping from the RTF file into this InDesign document. So that's how you work smarter and not harder and build a smart document 
so that with minimal effort, just by holding down, in this case, the magic shift key, all the text will flow through all the frames that have been linked together. So there's obviously quite a bit to setting up a document like this, and all of that, of course, is covered in our classes. I'm going to switch to the uh, Safari browser here, and you can see at thinkbiglearnsmart.com, we have regularly scheduled classes where we cover all this and much more. So if you're seeking certification, perhaps, to become an Adobe Certified Associate or Adobe Certified Expert, we'll be happy to help you with that. Thanks for watching this video.